Hello and welcome back to another tutorial on DaVinci Resolve. So I was looking around on YouTube and I came across this by Sonduk. It's a pretty cool motion graphics effect that goes over a few techniques that we can use in creating motion graphics. And I thought it would be a nice idea to duplicate this in DaVinci Resolve, seeing as though Sonduk specializes in After Effects. And then just show you guys how I did it. So it took a few tries, I had a bit of playing around, but I uh, came up with something that became pretty similar. So, without any further ado, let's get into it. If we jump into Resolve, and in the Edit tab, in our Media Pool, we right click, and we want a new Fusion Composition. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at 5 seconds, you can make yours as long as you want. And we'll call this Design Effect for this particular composition and create and then if we double click on that it will take us straight into the fusion page now the way I did this is I started with a white background so we drag a background node in change it to white and just connect that to our media out and as we can see that just gives us a plain white background then as I worked along I added different things along our node tree along the way and eventually we got to the final effect so to start with we will be adding in the text which is design and we will merge that text node over our background now we can't see the text because it is in white so we'll change the color to black the lettering on the video is a little further spread out so we'll do the same we'll just adjust the tracking and spread that out a little bit and then we need to um, create an outline of this text and duplicate it over our white background. So in order to do this, I copied my text node with Control and C and then posted an instance with Control, Shift and V. And an instance, for those of you that don't know, is simply a linked copy between these two nodes. So if I change the text in one, it will change in the other. Now, we want to de-instance certain parts because we don't want everything to be identical. So we're going to go over to the shading tab and in our shading elements, we're going to de-instance our level one and then unclick it so it disappears. And we're going to go into level two, de-instance that and enable it. Now I'll show you what level two of shading is. It's basically a pre-designed outline of text so we don't want that to be red, we want it to be black and if we change this to black that gives us what we are looking for so now it's just a case of duplicating it now you could control and copy and paste it on as many times as you like but there is a simpler way we will use a duplicate node so if we use a, a shift and space bar to bring up the search tool load in the duplicate node and I'm actually going to uh, copy that duplicate node and paste one next to it and put our text into both of them so we've got two duplicate nodes the first one if we uh, put that into our left view window we're going to duplicate this to the left so we just drag our center over to the left and I'm going to put it at 0.25 then number of copies I'm going to put that up to 3 there we go and that's duplicated our text to the left so, in the right duplicate node, we're going to put this at 0 0.75 and turn our text to 3. And if I put that one into the window, we can see it's copied it to the right. So now if we merge these two duplicates on top of each other, just by dragging the, this, the output into the output, and it'll create a merge node, we'll put that into our window, and we can see that we've got our duplicated line of text. Now, we need to duplicate it up and down. To do this, I'm just going to use the same method. I'm going to um, put two duplicate nodes in. <coughs> put my merge into both of them. And with the left duplicate node, I'm just going to copy it upwards. But not quite six. And we'll bring our copies up to six. Uh, with the right duplicate node, I'm going to 
bring our copy down to not point four so that they are unified or uniform should I say and bring the copies to six so now if we merge these on top of each other and merge this merge on top of our output line we will see that we've got the design duplicated across our background so that tracking looks a little wide you can't distinguish the gaps between the letters and the actual word so I'm just going to bring the tracking in a little bit just to make it a little more distinguishable that's fine so as we can see in our reference video the design letters are actually flickering and not just staying solid black so to add this in the way the only real way I could figure out to do this was we bring in some rectangular masks and individually over each letter we put a mask over letter so it's a case of duplicating this six times so just put this over the the D and what we have in our mask control is a level so this current so um, if we adjust this level it will fade the the letter in and out now we could keyframe this all the way through our timeline just to uh, create a random flickering effect but that's a lot of manual hard work so instead in Resolve we have an option where if we right click on our level we can modify with a shake and if we modify that with a shake it will in our modify tabs we have a um, we have a minimum and maximum and all it's going to do is it's going to um, sorry I'll try and explain that better <laughs> if we um, go to our, look at our tools, look at our level now when we press play we can see it is consistently um, adjusting throughout our timeline we can adjust how much it uh, alters by setting a minimum and a maximum so we can if we only want it to go 50% opacity we could change it to that and it will never drop below 50% opacity it will just stay and shake within this part but for this I think we, we can just shake between full and zero opacity and now it's a case of copying that and pasting moving it along to our next letter and the same again for all letters <coughs> So now if we play cross, but we can see that they're actually fading and um, they're fading in unison and we want them to be randomized. So it's a simple case of going into your rectangular mask, into your modifier and just click reseed and it will randomly uh, reseed these into a different um, rhythm. So if we reset all them and now I press play we can see that the design is flickering in and out and it is completely random. So next up we need to put in the grey scrolling bars. In order to do this I fetched in a background node, changed it to a light grey, add a rectangular mask and we'll bring that to our first window. We want the mask to completely cover it vertically but only about 50% horizontally. And then we put the background into a transform and we'll merge the transform on top of our original background. Now we want to do this before the text in the node tray because in no tree because we want it to be behind the text. Uh, and at the moment it's just a big big grey bar on its own. So within the transform we're going to bring the size down. And if we change the edges to wrap, that will fill in the uh, the missing areas and we want to set our angle to about minus 45 and just adjust our size until we get the, as many bars as we want on the screen and if we want to adjust the width of the bars if we go back into our rectangular mask we can just adjust the width of it and that will 
that will adjust that for us. So something about there. And then if we want to animate this, we go to our transform node, go to our first frame, keyframe the center of our transform, go to the end of our timeline, I'm just going to drag this to the right. And then if we go back to frame one and press play, we get these scrolling bars across the back of our graphic. So that's the bars. Next up, we need to draw these squiggly lines. So I'm going to do them after the gray bars because I want them to be on top, but we want them to be behind the text. So we'll do them before the text in the node tree. <coughs> So we need to bring in a black background node, merge that over our bars, and then we'll bring in a B-spline mask, and we'll attach that to our background. And then we're just going to go onto our image and draw a path that our line is going to take. In the B-spline, if we bring the border width up slightly, we'll see how thick that line is. And we can set that to what we want. Maybe about 0 0.04 ish. And then we're going to go to frame 1, set our length to 0, move forward to about 4 frames, bring our length up, something there, maybe 0 0.24, 0 0.024. And we will, oh, sorry, no, we need to go back to frame 1, keyframe our length at 0, go forward 4 frames. Bring our lamp out to where we want it. And then we keyframe our position as well. Skip to the end and bring our position all the way to the end. And now if we go back to frame one and press play, we get this little squiggly line dancing around our screen. Now, if you want more of those, it's a simple case of just copy that beast line, paste it. And if we go into our B spline, we want to select modify only from the top, select all those points, delete them, and then we can draw another line in from a different position and a different path. And then we can do the same again, just paste another one in, modify only, delete, and draw in another random path. So if I deselect those and press play, we get these little squiggly lines dancing around our screen. And next, we want to add in the random pop-up of the little flat gray bars. So we want them before our text so we're just going to move our text further down the tree and we're going to pop those uh, bars in here. The way I did this is I fetched in a black background node, applied a rectangular mask to it, and we made this a, a little flat black bar, merge that, in fact no we don't merge, we're going to uh, bring in a particle emitter and then a particle renderer and join the emitter into the renderer and then we're going to merge that over our background. Now in the particle emitter we're going to go to the style option and change it to a bitmap that allows us to put an input into the particle emitter and we're going to use our black bar as a reference. So that's made a lot of little black bars scatter along the center of our image What we're going to do is, if we go into the region, this is the region where these black bars will pop up and we want to set that as all, so that spreads them out across our screen. And if we go back into our style, these are a little small, so we're going to, uh, in our size option, we're going to bring up the size, maybe bring that up to one, and there's far too many, so if we go into the controls, we change the number down to 1. We'll just get a few popping up. The lifespan, we only want them to last probably about 10 frames. 
Um, we want to put a bit of variance in so it's not so uniform. We set the variance of about five frames. <coughs> and um, go back to our style tab. In our size, we want some size variance so they're not all uniform. If we change that to one, that should give us a little bit of size variance. So if we just go back and play through, then we have these little bars popping up and down. And all we're going to do is go into the merge node where they merge into our tree, and we're going to bring the blend down to about 25%. Something like that. And then we get these little bars popping up in the background. So next is the displacement effect. Now we want this to affect everything, so we're going to do it half after our text. So I'm just going to bring in a displace node of shift, shift and space, displace. And if we hold down shift and drag that over our node tree, that will add it in. And we want to use our particle emitter to drive this displacement. So I'm going to um, drag from our particle output into the input of our displace and then if we just hold down alt and click on this line we can put these little blocks in to move them out of the way. This makes things a little neater. And in our displace node, we're going to change from Luma to Alpha. And we actually want to invert this along the way. So I'm going to bring a Mac Control node in. And Mac Control is going to invert the mat. So now in our displace node, we can adjust our refractional strength to suit what we want. And if we press play, wherever these little black bars pop up, we get a displacement effect against our text. Let's just have a play around to see if we get this how we'd like. I want a slight displacement. And so there we go, a few techniques that you can use uh, when you're creating motion graphics. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit, a, um, hit the like button and subscribe and I will keep these coming. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.